Hey, what's up? I'm Ara, aka I Eat Zebra, and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't had a chance to watch Yellow Jackets on Showtime, I have no clue what you're doing, but you're definitely missing out. Season one just finished, and boy, do I still have a lot of questions and speculation. One of the biggest questions coming from season one is who killed Travis? Well, I started digging into this, trying to be a good citizen detective, and I think I figured out who is responsible. However, during my investigation, I uncovered more speculation and an even greater theory at large. So let's consider this part one of a larger Jello Yellow Jackets theory. We have a lot to discuss, so let's get to it. We know Travis is one of the survivors that made it out of the woods, along with Nat, Shauna, Ty, Misty, and according to the season finale, Lottie. I do believe more people made it out the woods, but that is a totally different topic worthy of its own video. I do want to say from this point out, not only will there be spoilers for season one, there may be some triggering discussions around suicide. If this is a sensitive topic for you, I will include a timestamp in the description that you can skip to. Back to the theory. We know Travis survived until 2021, but the first time we see an adult Travis in person is when Nat and Misty discover his dead body. The coroners and police rule it a suicide due to him being found hanging. However, his body was hanging from a crane, which is really suspicious if you ask me, because how did he get himself up there? We also find out from a toxicology report that he did not have any drugs in his system at the time of death. Nat was highly convinced he was murdered, but Missy, Shauna, and Ty actively try to convince her that maybe he did commit suicide, all for their own personal ulterior motives, which I'll dive into throughout the video. Nat, towards the end of the season, starts to believe maybe they are right and Travis did commit suicide, so she decides that maybe she will do the same. That is when she picks up a gun, and right before she goes through with it, she is stopped by several people that end up kidnapping her, while they, we see someone wearing a pendant that has a symbol on it. We have seen the same symbol multiple times throughout the season, and it relates to their time in the woods. Long story short, I believe the people that kidnap Nat at the end of season are the ones that killed Travis. But they're not the only ones complicit in his murder. Oh no. A few other people are linked to his death. And Nat was absolutely right. He was murdered. Like a good citizen detective, the best thing to do would to be to look at our suspects one by one to examine their involvement in the murder. First up, Misty. Yes, that is right. I said Misty. Misty just has way too much information and a whole lot of conveniences. To start off, Missy has a file on every one of the survivors. Travis changed his name, moved to New Hampshire, and started working on a ranch there. She also noticed notes how hard it was to locate Travis and that it seemed like he really didn't want to be found. When Nat goes through the information, she notices Misty has the new license plate and phone number for Travis. Obviously, she knows Nat is going to want to reconnect with Travis due to their previous relationship which is exactly what Nat does. She calls him right after she leaves Misty's place while she's back in the motel room. Travis answers, but then hangs up. The next morning, she decides to leave New Jersey and head to New Hampshire to see Travis. And her car decides all of a sudden it doesn't want to start. Guess who conveniently decides to arrive? Misty, along with a second cup of coffee and she just somehow happened to be in the neighborhood and happened to have the day off and was available to take this drive with Nat to New Hampshire, which is roughly about six hours away. Around the three hour mark, Missy is texting someone while her and Nat are talking about relationships and guys. And it seems like Missy is texting a potential suitor based on the subject of this conversation. However, I do not think that is the case. Not long after they stop at a gas station, Missy was pretty adamant on Nat going inside the store with her, but Nat stands on not going in, so Missy just goes inside the store alone. While she's in the store, Nat finds the 
cables that were missing from her car inside Missy's glove box. She confronts Missy about this and Missy just says she did it because she knew Nat wouldn't agree with her going along for the ride otherwise. Fun fact, they're not the only people at this gas station that we know of at the time. I'll circle back to who else is there in a bit. They arrive at Travis's place where they had to kind of break in and it looks a bit disheveled. There's an expensive bottle of liquor there that did not have much missing out of it. Missy conveniently finds Travis's pay stub and notices where he works. However, they get arrested briefly after this happens because it seems like a neighbor called the cops reporting the break-in. Missy is able to get them out of jail by placing a call to Kevin pretending to be Nat. Kevin works in law enforcement, but back in New Jersey. How he managed to get them out is still odd to me, but nonetheless, they leave and go to Travis's job at the ranch. That is when they find his body hanging from the crane. Not long after they've arrived, they hear police sirens off in the distance, and Missy urges her and Nat to leave. However, what really stands out is Missy's behavior in this scene. She doesn't seem super surprised or shocked to see that Travis is dead. They head back, and Missy informs Shauna about Travis's death while she's reading an article on it. In the article, it doesn't say Travis Martinez, but has his new assumed identity. In the article, it also rules it a suicide. Shauna seems shocked at the reveal, and Missy delivers the news in a very misty way. Nat was continuing to insist that he was murdered, and Missy decides she's going to help. She rather quickly points out that the symbol from the woods can be seen in wax on the floor, which is odd because how the hell did she put that together so quickly unless she knew to look for it, which I believe she in fact really did. This is what I'm thinking of Missy so far. She was meant to keep Nat from Travis in order for him to be murdered. She knew where he was. She let Nat get the information, knowing she was going to reach out to him. Nat speaks to him the night before, then the very next day it appears he is dead. I think she was purposely slowing Nat down, as well as also being her support, because she knew this would be hard for Nat to handle. In her own weird way, Missy does seem to care for Nat a bit. But anyways, she texts her contact to let them know they have three hours before they arrive. They conveniently get arrested, buying even more time for someone to kill Travis, position his body and the candles into that symbol. She then brings Nat to the scene to show she clearly isn't involved. Then the police again conveniently arrive not long after them. And this time they were actually were able to get out. We're going to pause on Missy for a second so we can get into another suspect. And that is Shauna. Okay, well, just kidding. I do not think she was actually involved in Travis's death. After we find out about Jeff blackmailing Nat and Ty and how that was covered up, I think she actually urges Nat to rethink it was a suicide because she was with Adam the night he was murdered and she kind of doesn't want her digging in further and obviously discovering the truth about Jeff. But I do not think Jeff's blackmail attempt is related to Travis's death. I don't think he's involved at all. But with Sean and Jeff out the way, we're going to move right along to another suspect on my list, and that is involved in Travis's death. That individual would be Ty. I know this one is probably a bit more surprising than Misty, but let's talk about her. We know Ty is running for senator and has an investigative journalist, Jessica Roberts, working for her. Jessica has been reaching out to the survivors, trying to tempt them into breaking their silence. She does find Travis, brings over the expensive bottle of liquor that Missy and Nat found in his house. She said they talked very, very briefly before he kicked her out. Jessica is sharing this information with Ty at the same exact gas station that we see Misty and Nat at. So we know Jessica is so far probably one of the last people to see him alive. And I believe Nat called him maybe after he spoke with Jessica. So you're probably wondering what this has to do with Ty. Well, I think Ty and Missy are in cahoots with the people that took Nat. I think the ringleader behind all of this is Lottie. I believe Lottie, along with Missy and Ty and her cult followers, 
are responsible for Travis's death. We know Lottie is the one that closed Travis's bank account after he died, meaning she must have had been a beneficiary on the account already or had some type of legal paperwork to take care of it. However, he did have a new identity, so how would she know he is dead so quickly unless she had something to do with it? And why would Lottie want to kill Travis? Well, I have a theory as to why, and it's a bit tinfoil y, but just hear me out. I believe Lottie becomes this cult leader, aka the Antler Queen, while they're in the woods. During the scene when they were tripping on shrooms, Lottie seemed to want to sacrifice Travis. I believe, with it being the 25th year anniversary of the crash, which is a pretty significant anniversary, Lottie has something really big planned. I believe one step in that plan was sacrificing Travis. How this connects to Misty and Ty? Well, you're going to have to wait for the next part in this theory. So for me to get into how Misty and Ty are involved, we got to dive way deeper into this cult. Lottie being the antler queen, the symbol, what that means, which is going to be a lot to cover. So I'll be making a separate video going further into that. So don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button in the notification bell for when the next part of this larger yellow jackets theory drops please let me know your theories on who you think killed travis in the comments below and what you think is going on with this cult also if you're a fan of the show euphoria do not forget to check out the live after show i host along with mj from gray area and chloe from girls gone canon i'll leave a link to that in the description down below also you guys know preposterous af new episodes drop every Monday on all podcast platforms. So I'll see you next time. Bye.